So, in the midst of some of the biggest bluefish I've ever seen in the Raritan Bay, um, I managed to catch a much smaller one, and I get pretty excited. I really didn't want to kill um, or even attempt to cook some of the bigger ones we were catching. This one's smaller? This one's smaller! Alright, now I gotta get him in. Not that much smaller. This is smaller. Things like a snapper, this one. Alright, come on, buddy. Alright. Perfect size. Look at you. Guys, catch and cook starts here. You gotta bleed these fish out. You should bleed every fish, but with bluefish, it really is mandatory. Bleed them out and then put them on ice. membranes, give it a cut, not too deep. They don't take that long to bleed. Once they bleed out, put them on ice. That's it. If you're not willing to do that, don't kill these fish. pretty much bled out. To really get every last ounce of blood, you would have to cut the tail. We're not going to do that. Ah, oh, perfect! Okay, so now we're going to deal with the fish. Um, before we start, I have uh, just some chip ice in a bowl. I'm going to add a good amount of sea salt or kosher salt to it. And I'm just going to make a saltwater slurry. Well, not a slurry, but... Kind of an ice brine. Um, we're not brining the fish. But what we are going to use this for is just rinsing off the fillets. Give it a quick taste. It should be at least as salty as the water you fish in, and a little bit saltier is fine. So just a quick note, um, you never want to rinse your fillets in fresh water. Saltwater fish gets a saltwater rinse and uh, freshwater fish, freshwater winds. And I'm not very proficient at filleting fish, um, so just bear with me. The main thing is, you know, take your time and try not to waste any meat. That's it. You know, um, I have worked actually my first job out of culinary school was at a seafood restaurant in New York City. And I left before I got to fillet any fish. Anyway, so just gonna angle it and get it down to the bone. And I'm just gonna make a cut there. Now turn your knife so it's right along the backbone. Then you can kind of poke your knife through. Okay. And what I like to do at this point is I just turn it over and do the same thing on this side. So instead of taking off that whole side, um, 
I'm just tracing. You see, I want to go over the backbone. Okay, here we go. Yeah, like I said, not the best fishmonger in the world, but and you know, the trick is lay your palm flat and then pull in to supply pressure across the fish, pulling it downwards. This one I kind of mangled. My apologies. Here, scrape the bone to the backbone and then ride over it once you get to. You know, you never want to just cut down and then swipe across because your knife is going to come on top of the backbone. Hopefully you can see this. You know, and you're going to lose the meat on either side, okay? So, once you go over the hump of the backbone, then you angle your knife the opposite way. So you're basically cutting it to the backbone, over the backbone, and then on the other side, okay? And with bluefish, I'm gonna go around the ribs. There's going to be pin bones and such that we'll deal with later, but that's one fillet we have down here. We'll turn it over. Okay. Sorry, I'm facing the wrong way here, but anyway, that's... Fillet number two. Eh. I say that's okay. It's not a bad job. It's not great. Okay, normally I would never throw this rack away or throw the head away for most fish, but bluefish, there's not much you can do with this. Uh, you can maybe smoke it, but anyway, that's garbage. So, skinning, uh, normally you want like a longer knife but that's what I have to work with. I feel like showing you guys this kind of half-ass fillet job is redundant. There's so many videos from real pros on the internet. To remove these pin bones, along here you will make two cuts. Relatively bone free. Now, bluefish. You have this dark meat, this kind of red meat. Uh, that has to go. So, I cut it like that, and I'm going to cut it again because that's how I'm going to serve it, and I poke my knife through at an angle, just, you know, like you're taking silver skin off, and with this stuff, you want to err on the side of taking more, you know, taking off a little meat along with along with the bloodline rather than leaving the bloodline um, because you know, that is just not worth it. Drop these in the brine wash it off, any scales, any little pieces of guts that were stuck on there. Okay. Okay, colander. Okay. 
is a very important part is we are going to dry this fish off and store it for however long we need to store it, no more than two days, and never freeze bluefish on paper towels. You should do this for any kind of fish, but again, with bluefish, it's mandatory. So never just dump fish into plastic Ziploc bags or saran wrap or just foil that, you know, that fish is not going to keep. What's going to happen is, as you store your fish in the refrigerator, um, actually this goes for meat too, chicken, beef, whatever, it's going to extrude more water. So anyway, that was just to dry it, and this is clean paper towels for storing it. This is what you need to do to keep your fish in its best condition. Um, anyway, so you have a couple layers to wick away moisture, and what that does is it prevents a lot of the bacteria to grow on the fish. The kind of bacteria that gives it kind of a fishy taste and it speeds up the spoiling process. So, so with bluefish, like any fish, but especially with something like bluefish, you need to, what you need to do is control the temperature, so keep it as cold as possible. Um, constantly, never letting that temperature rise once you let it out, and controlling moisture. Okay, so now this is going to wick itself in the refrigerator for up to two days. Okay, now we wrap it, foil, and you're good to go. Okay. This is how you store it for up to two days in the fridge. And I would never freeze bluefish, but if you have to, I will freeze it after the two days in the fridge to get as much water out of these fillets as you can. Okay, just very quickly, um, on the right are the ingredients for the miso glaze, and on the left is the paprika glaze. And for the miso glaze, you have oil, um, agave nectar, miso, mirin, sake, and dark soy. And for the paprika glaze, it's just olive oil, brown sugar, paprika, and Dijon mustard. Go mustard. I say that's about a tablespoon. And salt. Give it a pinch. I say maybe a tablespoon and a half. Brown sugar. Yeah. What's that? Maybe a tablespoon. Alright, so so far it's kind of one, one, and one. After cutting any kind of citrus. Okay, so I'm going to put about a quarter of a lime. Five sec. Anyway. The middle part you squeeze. A little pulp gets in there, no problem, it's fine. Okay. And there, you just want to whisk. You see right now it's kind of a paste. Now you just want to whisk in your olive oil. Just like a salad dressing. Start kind of slow. This is what you're looking at. Like I said, kind of a gloopy salad dressing type consistency. That's much better. And a couple pinches of salt. Now 
for the miso glaze. Um, the easiest way to get miso out is just with a pair of chopsticks, but you could use two spoons. So now, let's see. I'm making way more glaze than I actually need for just one, one fish, but that, eh, tablespoon and a half. Sake. I say that's probably a couple of teaspoons. Equal amount of marin. And equal amount of soy sauce. Okay. Have a nectar. I would say start with maybe two teaspoons and then later on when you taste go from there. Okay, and juice of maybe I would say a third of a lime. Start there. Oh Jesus. Okay. Okay, so what happened here is um, not enough miso. Back here, add more miso. Now, if I were cooking in a restaurant or developing a recipe, um, obviously the amounts would be exact. But, you know, I do like the variation cooking at home. You know, sometimes it's, if I ever hit like a perfect recipe by accident, I'll try to recreate it. But anyway, so here the same but yeah, maybe another tablespoon of miso whisk it out so that is what you want okay last part this place is just maybe a couple of teaspoons of a neutral oil and this isn't to bind it together like it is with the paprika glaze this is just to give it some shine um, you know it's coating the back of the spoon it's going to coat your fish okay so these are the two sauces the two glazes the other part of this dish is um we need some lime slices and unfortunately this is the last lime i have i might need more so i'm going to borrow a kind of gnarly looking lemon but it should be fine and what you also need is uh, some thyme sprigs you could use rosemary which will actually work okay with bluefish but in any case this is how you store fresh herbs to make them last um, just loosely wrapped in paper towels ziploc bag with a few holes punched in it cut the ends off get to where the meat is, you know. Okay, perfect. The same to this sad lemon here. And then we'll cut it in half. Alright. Okay. Clean up. And you're ready to slice. This is just a half baking sheet and um, I lined up with heavy duty foil. It's already oiled. Just some grapeseed oil and a brush. So we're just going to lay down lemon slices like that. the bottom. Okay. Now, okay, so now let's put this aside. Now, we 
we want to brush the bottom, the skin side of the fillets. So here's the miso. See the consistency is letting this glaze just kind of cling to the fish. Also, these fish have firmed up quite a bit um, after leaching out some of the moisture. Let's see. I'm going to lay these down first. So, that was the skin side, and here is your presentation side. Just put it down. This down. It's just a little longer than it has to be, but that's fine. Now, finish. Brush the top. Now, be a little bit more careful with the paprika glaze. It's pretty powerful. Make sure you get all the edges, outside edge. Just lay a couple pieces of thyme. Uh, these are almost like a uh, garnish. Although it will give the fish, you know, a nice perfume. Okay. 500 degree oven and check Check it in about three minutes and rotate the pan. It's been three and a half minutes. Get out. All right. I'm going to rotate that again. Give it two more minutes and then maybe pull the smaller pieces. Okay, so, total about five minutes so far. These, now, this plate is gonna be for the paprika glaze. You just slide your, Rotate again. Right. Two more minutes on those. The paprika fish, and yeah, these are done. So about six minutes on the. Here, let me turn this off. All right, so six minutes on the smaller fillets, and about I would say eight minutes on these larger ones. I never turn the broiler on, just really hot oven. Make sure you preheat it. Um, always preheat your oven, right? Doesn't have to be perfect, just try to get it on the plate in one piece. Lemons are nicely caramelized. See that? And they can be garnish. Uh, you can eat them too. Okay. A more sprigs of the thyme. Uh, to finish the dish, both this one and the other one, I just give it a little bit of olive oil. You know, you have some good extra virgin olive oil. Um, you could serve it with a lime wedge, but it should be pretty lemony already. I'm just going to give it a... This piece, quick. Yeah. You know, it's not 
Now you see bluefish have these very long flakes and you know that really reminds me of uh, like larger mackerel. It's actually a pretty good contrast, east and west. Um, the same cooking technique, you know, we're just roasting it in a hot oven. Um, completely different flavor profile. And you can make the glazes, um, they can be stored in the fridge for at least a week, if not longer. And um, the only thing I might omit if you're going to store it for you know, let's say 10, 15 days is the lemon juice. Uh, you know, you can do that the day of. Okay. Anyway, that's that. And I and I hope you enjoyed it. All right. So give these dishes a try. Uh, bluefish are, in my opinion, our best game fish. Uh, when they come in, when they invade, they're just Phenomenal. Another episode, um, we'll probably smoke them. You know, they're also, the large ones are excellent smoking fish. Probably one of the best smoking fish um, that I've worked with. Um, but that's a lot of work. And, uh, you know, I, I find it more and more difficult to kill, you know, large fish of any given species. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Give this a try. And uh, I'm glad I was able to catch that smaller blue to show you guys this, these two dishes. All right, thanks.